All right, as we are in election season, it would be interesting to take a look at some of the key figures who may have an effect on these important parliamentary elections. We had an earlier video on Cho Guk, and we encourage you to check that video out if you can. Right now, we want to take a look at another politician, and his name is Yi Jun Suk. Now, Yi Jun Suk is a fascinating case because he is quite a polarizing figure. You either hate him or you love him, and there really is not a lot of in between those two opinions. But it also cannot be denied that he is one of the most, if not the most, brilliant political minds right now in modern Korean politics. For a brief overview, he was. The former ruling party, the former People Power Party chairman. He successfully led election victories for the president, for local election candidates, and he was ultimately cast aside, became an outcast in that very party he led due to a host of reasons that we'll get into. And so now Lee is setting upon a course to try. And create what seems impossible, a third alternative to this entrenched two party system here in Korea that has been the norm for decades. And the question is can he pull off a political miracle in this race? So, as far as Lee's political path, he's quite a young politician. That's really sort of part of his brand, being this young, smart, Capable politician. He was born in 1985, was a brilliant student from the outset. He attended Seoul Science High School, which is one of the most difficult, prestigious high schools to get into here in the country. Ultimately, he was admitted to KAIST, which is basically the MIT of Korea, but he only stayed there a couple of months because he ended up transferring to Harvard University, ultimately graduating. With a computer science degree. He worked as a programmer for a few years,、uh, doing other types of jobs, including forming an education foundation to help disadvantaged youth in the country. And he got his start in politics by coming in as what was known back at the time as one of the p a k u n e kids. This was when the then Leader of the Senuri Conservative Party, Park Geun-hye, formed an emergency committee to try to regain the popularity of the ruling party, which had fallen into disarray, was really on the verge of collapse because of the unpopularity of the conservative president at the time, Lee Myung-bak. Well, Park recruited a bunch of young politicians to help her out. And one of those politicians was Lee j u n s u k And so he first came to prominence as a member of this emergency committee, made a name for himself, was proven to be quite a capable interviewee in various media inter-、um, interviews. And that sort of charted his course to not just being a politician and rising the ranks in the conservative party circles, but also. Becoming almost a household name during this time because of his frequent interviews. He was well known for almost never turning down an interview. It didn't matter if it was a hostile environment or a friendly environment, a liberal、uh, outlet or a conservative outlet. He was willing to spar with whoever. It didn't matter who his debate opponent might be at the time. He was a capable verbal warrior, and that was shown throughout、uh, through the beginning of his political career. And so he gradually gained prominence, eventually and ultimately becoming the leader of that conservative party. And so, as leader of the conservative party, which again was an upset victory for him to win that party election, he then took the reins of what was now called the People Power Party, and he led that party to numerous election victories. First, In the by elections, this was a little before he became chairman of the party, but he was well known to have aided 
in the successful election of various local and national assembly candidates during those by-elections. He took over the party and then shepherded famously a successful presidential election where a prosecutor turned politician named Yoon Seo-yeol became president of the country. Right after that, very impressive electoral victory. He then led the party to another rousing victory over the opposition during the local elections where the conservative ruling party swept most of the major governorships and mayoral races around the country. And so what was the key to his success at the time when he led the party? Well, the party was suffering from having an image of being old and staid. Conservative kind of perhaps has that connotation to many people, but uh, the actual demographics of both the party voters as well as the people leading the party were these old men in their 60s, maybe 70s, uh, out of touch with the regular folks, and most of them kind of based in the southeastern part of the country, the Yongnam region, which is famous for being that conservative stronghold. Well, Lee tried to sort of change the mold with that. He recognized that the long-term survival of this conservative party meant they had to make inroads with not just this conservative base, but with centrist voters and with a new generation of voters who would continue to support the party. And thus, he made a lot of inroads into currying favor with younger male voters. A lot of these younger male voters perhaps had been more supportive of the liberal parties at the time, but they became disillusioned with the liberal party for various policy disagreements, including issues like their disagreement over real estate, their anger over policies that made them feel they were frozen out of being able to purchase a home. They were angered over issues regarding the very hot-button issue of feminism here in the country. And so these young male voters, disgruntled with the liberal parties, looked to another leader, and they saw that leader in Lee jun And so with that support, he was sort of able to craft together politi- uh, a coalition of young male voters along with this steady group of supporters in the older demographic group of voters. And he also attempted to make inroads into the southwestern region of the country, which is the Honan region. And he tried to gain votes there. It's a difficult task because this is really the stronghold of the Liberal Party, and this was a region that's been heavily suppressed and attacked during the conservative dictatorships of the 60s, 70s, and 80s. And so it's it's a very, very difficult job for any conservative politician to try to get any semblance of support there. But he went in, he talked about how the past conservative regimes indeed had done the people in Honam very wrong. He made amends, he made mea culpas, and he was successful to a certain extent in getting a higher percentage of voters to support him and the party. Now, this was a very long-term project for Lee to try to get more and more support from the Honam region to truly make this conservative party, a more national party rather than regionally based in the Yongnam areas and only the really rich, wealthy districts around the country. And so that long-term plan included getting a new generation of voters to support him as well as people who otherwise would never have considered the conservative party by showing them He was a more reformist type of conservative. He wasn't stuck in the old ways. He was able to listen and debate policies and perhaps even alter policies if he felt that these policies really uh, were worthy of having some modifications. And so that long-term plan and those reforms were something that he was planning to do throughout his term as party chairman until 
things all fell apart for him. And what happened was the old guard conservatives, as well as the president himself, Yoon, had long been resentful of Lee. And this resentment was building up throughout the lead up of all these elections. He may have been leading the party, but they didn't like his attitude. They thought this was a young punk who was sort of disrespectful to the old guard. He talked in a way that was not necessarily um, completely subservient to these older conservatives. They felt that he was kind of pushing for changes that were not in line with the orthodox conservative values. And the president, Yoon, quite frankly, just never liked him. And it didn't seem like they were ever on the same page, even when they were campaigning together during that presidential election. And so the tie turned. Yoon and his allies hatched a plan to oust Lee from the leadership of the party. And they did this through various ways. There was leaks to the press from Yoon's cronies, kind of denigrating Lee. There were allegations made against him, which had been lingering, including some sexual favors, scandal allegation, which had been proven now later on by the police to not be uh, anything that they were going to charge him with, legally speaking, and other types of violations, which ultimately went through an ethics committee, as well as some party chicanery where the Yoon allies kind of engineered some tricks with the Supreme Council, which sort of makes the decisions of leadership within that party structure. And ultimately, through those kind of tricks of the party constitution, they were able to ultimately conduct a coup d'etat and kick Lee out of office. And that basically put Lee into the political wilderness. And eventually, he made a fateful decision ahead of these parliamentary elections to leave this party. He left the conservative party that he always felt was home, and he formed what is known as the Reform Party ahead of the general elections, and that's where we stand right now. So, what he is trying to do is considered by most political pundits to be impossible. We should point out that he's trying to run in the Reform Party as a candidate in a district that is dominated by the liberals right now, by the Democratic Party. Lee himself, although he was successful as party chairman and winning a party membership, he has never been successful in a national election. He's never won a parliamentary seat. He lost in what is known as the No One District three consecutive times. This is a district that is, again, dominated by the Democratic Party. And so that constant sort of attempt and perseverance to run, to some, people find that to be quite admirable and something that shows discipline and perseverance. But to his political enemies, it's met with derision. And so he had this nickname that roughly translated from Korean means minus three-term senior lawmaker. And so he has decided now to leave that no one district, which was a childhood home of his, and he is trying to now pull off perhaps something even more difficult. He's trying to win in a seat in the Dongtan district. And the Dongtan district, if anything, is even more heavily tilted towards the liberal Democratic Party. And so the odds are against him. But compounding that fact is he doesn't even have the party structure of being with the ruling conservative people power party. And he's trying to do this on his own, essentially, with the reform party, which is a fledgling party. They've got a few candidates in a few districts, and they've got a slate of candidates for proportional seats, but they're not really polling high right now as a party. But for Lee himself, he has shown some momentum heading into election day where the gap between him and the Democratic Party candidate 
had been in the initial outset of the campaign quite large. He was losing by maybe 20, 30 percentage points in most polls. But the latest polls to have come out before the blackout period when polls are banned a week before the elections has shown some of them showing him within single digits of the leading Democratic Party candidate. So the trends are showing that the race is tightening. Does he have enough time to actually pull off this miracle upset? That is what a lot of people are going to be looking out for. The odds makers probably will say that he ultimately probably won't succeed in this endeavor. And you can say he's still a young politician. He's just 40 years old. He's got maybe 20, 30, 40 years of political life, life left in him. And he's got a long-term kind of path to strive for. And there are a lot of questions that remain as far as what kind of legacy he can leave behind. Can he shake off this negative image that he has to a large percentage of people? And can he truly kind of shake off this label of being this minus three-term senior lawmaker and become a national level politician. Again, as I said in the outset, nobody doubts the talent and the capabilities and the quick wit of Lee Jun Suk as a politician. The question is, can he do it to himself? And can he actually achieve this vision of reforming the conservative party, of remaking this old, stodgy block of voters and politicians and having them become a more modern party to be able to have long-term sustainability heading into the 21st century. That is going to be an interesting question, and a lot of those answers will be answered after April 10th when we see the election results for Lee jun Suk. Well, that's going to do it for us. Hope you enjoyed it. You can check out our other series of election videos, including a profile on Choguk. Please check that out. And until the next time, we'll talk to you again soon. Goodbye.